Okay, so as Flora introduced you to on Monday, um, this month's topic is relationships. And I'm just going to keep try to keep it narrowed down by discussing only Gemma's relationships because there's so many in all the books and so many that I'd like to talk about, like Anne and Charlie's Falls, but since this doesn't really happen, anyway, I'm getting off track. <laughs> okay, so, um, first of all, Gemma's relationship with her family as a whole is really kind of depressing. Uh, she mentions in the first book that she and her mother used to get along very well and they would do a lot of stuff in India together. And I guess it's just kind of the process of growing up that she's sort of taking a step away from her parents. But it's just sad that she never really gets a chance to reconcile with her mother and sort of form a more adult relationship with her. Uh, and I feel like the same thing has happened with her father, but in a different way, um, where she was close to him and then her mother died and her father just kind of stuck his head in the ground and won't pay attention to her. The relationship with Tom is typical brother-sister, I guess. Um, and I like that it is because while they do argue, they both definitely love each other and they try to help each other out. And, you know, I don't know. It's, it's just a nice, typical brother-sister relationship. Uh, her relationship with her grandmother is a little... I don't know. I, I, I'm i kind of glad I don't have a relationship like, like that with any of my relatives, because it just seems very torturous where everything's on the surface. And I know that's a very Victorian thing, but I know these days there are still people who have relationships like that with people that otherwise they would love, I guess? I don't know. Her family's very complicated. Uh, right, so now let's go to friendships. Uh, I love the friendships in these books because they're very real in that not everything is wonderful all the time and big things and little things can put a relationship in danger. Um, I don't know, they're just very complex and, you know, Gemma's sort of the secret keeper for all of her friends, I think. She knows about Anne's, you know, her cutting and her emotional problems and stuff. Um, and she knows about things like epilepsy, I don't know, she just, and, and fees abuse, she just knows a lot of stuff, and I think that sometimes knowing all that stuff can also have a weight on their friendship, I guess. Now, romantic relationships. Uh, okay, well, first of all, my favorite is Karthik and Gemma, because they belong together and they're adorable. Um, I don't even know what to say about them. They're cute, and I love them, and, um, I don't know, they just, they genuinely, they genuinely like each other, and I think that in the Victorian age for a relationship was not so common. And with Simon, and I know for you were talking Simon up, but, um, we're just, we're not sure about whether Simon really likes her or not, because in the third book we find out that Lord Denny is part of the Rakshana and may or may not have had something to do with them meeting. He says it was like a scene meeting or something. I don't know why I don't remember this, I just read it last night. You, know, you just never know. Like Gemma went with her first instinct, which was good because she had that feeling that if she were to be with Simon, she'd get caught and just be stuck there forever. And Simon would never really accept her for who she was. She, he'd accept the surface level of who she was, you know, a pretty, young, unique girl, but he wouldn't accept her actual unique qualities. I think the most unique thing he accepts about her is that, like, she has red hair and she's spicy, but he wouldn't want to go any deeper than that. But I'm, I'm for Jem and Karthik all the way. Simon can go marry Lucy. It's cool. <laughs> uh, so I will see you guys later. Bye! that she and her mother used to get along a lot and very well, well, can't talk.